Hello, my name is Fena. Welcome to the Self Compassion Channel. I am a certified coach and counselor, and I work with people in a limited episode and also with their partner. So, if you want my help in one on one coaching, please send me an email. My email address is in the description below. We can do a private one on one session. Uh, internationally online. I'm kind of shouting because there's a lot of noise around me. I'm not at home. I'm in Ghana, but there's like a disco behind me and there are children running around. Um, I'm here to do what I love to do most in life besides helping people in a limited episode and that is taking care of animals. I hope you can still hear me. I will speak up a little bit. Hopefully we know by now that limerence is an altered state of mind that includes obsessive and unwanted and very intrusive thoughts about someone. Um, and we feel very much out of control in our infatuation, uh, out of control in our feelings and in our thoughts. And one of the key factors that contribute to the intensity of a limerent episode is the intermittent reinforcement. Intermittent reinforcement is a behavior concept that involves providing rewards or punishment on an unpredictable schedule. So let's take out the romance in a limerent episode. It's all about the reward hormones. And I'm going to explain to you why. Intermittent rewards causes repetition of behavior. I say that over and over because it's so important to know what is actually going on in a limerent episode. In other words, when the reward comes unpredictably, we mammals tend to go nuts. And intermittent reinforcement does contribute to the intensity of limerence because it increases it creates, I mean, it creates a sense of uncertainty that happens to be highly stimulating. Yeah, we kind of noticed that. And research has shown that this type of reinforcement can activate the dopamine reward system in our brain like nothing else. And this will lead to increased feelings of pleasure and excitement, this warm, fuzzy feelings that we all have in the beginning of a limerent episode. Dopamine is released in response to the positive social cues, such as the sight or the sound or interaction with the other that we find attractive, or even the ping on our telephone can um, make our hormones change. So we flush our brain with too much dopamine in the beginning of a limerent episode. And we don't do that consciously. That happens subconsciously. And this is also why limerence feels so good in the beginning. But after a while, we empty the source. We used up too much dopamine. And that's why after a while we feel so bad. Because limerence never stays a positive thing. It gives us pleasure and energy in the beginning and it gives us sorrow and depression and all sorts of pain after a while. So in addition, intermittent reinforcement can lead to feelings of pleasure, but also after a while can lead to feelings of anxiety and severe stress as individuals become preoccupied with trying to predict when they will receive the reward or the punishment. And this, of course, spikes the intensity of limerence as we try to predict um, the outcome by being more and more focused on the object, meaning the other of our affection. And this is an effort to gain um, their attention, to get the reward, their approval, their attention, the contact. We try to predict the outcome over and over and over. 
And of course, we do this rumination in order to gain some sense, gain some sense of control. Our brain is desperately trying to establish um, some sense of control by looping and predicting. And that is also why we can feed off on hope for years. We want to control, we want to go back to how great it used to feel. The period when we were flooding our brain with the dopamine. And we ask ourselves subconsciously, why can't it be like it was in the beginning? Maybe I can do something to go back to this, this place. Maybe I can get more rewards. Maybe I can try harder, love harder. Maybe I can do something to get back to this place. Maybe this time, maybe this round. Yeah, it doesn't really work. Because research has also shown that intermittent reinforcement creates addictions. And a study published in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychologically, I always struggle with this word, found that individuals, people who were exposed to a lot of intermittent reinforcement were more likely to engage in addictive behavior such as um, substance abuse or gambling. So overall, while intermittent reinforcement can contribute to um, a nice and wanted um, intensity of limerence, it can also be the source of stress and anxiety. anxiety. And that's why you cannot regulate your hormones and your emotions after a while. Your hormones got dysregulated because of the unpredictableness and you cannot really reason your hormones back in balance. Believe me, I've tried and I see my clients try that by telling themselves that it's not such a bad um, deal to be friend with benefits or um, they should just, you know, don't make such a big deal out of this or they just not have an ego anymore or they have to meditate in order to deal with this. But the fact is you're in an unsafe um, relationship. You're out of tune and you cannot pretend that you don't have needs. You cannot change your needs. So what does help to bring our hormones back in balance? Well, you can stop the unpredictable reward interaction. You can take out the unpredictableness by going no contact, by looking um, or stop looking at the dopamine for the dopamine hit. You sit with your run out dopamine for a while until your body starts to produce it on its own again. Um, your body eventually will start to produce dopamine again without needing the other person. And I love this sentence. I want to make a t-shirt with a quote that says, you sit with your run out dopamine. And Yes, your life will feel grey and empty and meaningless for a while and even boring. That's not because you miss the other person, it's because you feel the lack of dopamine. That's why you toss around in bed. That's why you feel like you need to reconnect with this person. But don't take your feelings as proof. Your feelings are not proof that you are a good fit. It proves that you are lacking dopamine. And consciously, we know that this person has flaws and we know that this person is a person is a complete mismatch and we sometimes don't even like the other person that much and we don't really want to be with them. It's just that we mistake the intermittent um, reinforcement, the intermittent reward for love and genuine attraction. And the weird thing about addictions is of course that we don't want it. We desperately want to get out, but we also find it really scary to get out. It scares us to quit the addiction. 
because we are afraid of a freaked out nerve system. If having a freaked out nerve system feels like dying a little bit. But you will survive it and you will not only survive, you will thrive. You can choose to quit the reward and punishment cycle. Take out the oxygen of the fuel in a limited episode. If you take out the uncertainty, you take out a really big ingredient of the lemons. And if you do that today, you will feel better in a few months. And I really hope that you grant yourself this big, big present. Now, if you still can hear me, I can even not even hear myself. I want to thank you for watching this video. And if you have anything to say, please leave a comment below. Let's create awareness, more awareness around limerence because we can use more awareness in that department. There's not enough. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in another video. Bye.